Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions of the changing Arctic. So, you know, the, the mechanisms for Arctic sea ice loss that um, are kicking in from the shoaling of the warmer, salter Atlantic water down below the ice. It's coming right up to the ice in the eastern um, uh, Eurasian basin. And what it will do is stop the ice even forming throughout the winter months. And as this shoaling works its way eastward ac across the rest of the Arctic, it will eventually lead, in my opinion, to um, a year-round Arctic, uh, ice-free Arctic, Arctic Ocean. So I'm discussing, I, I started discussing this paper in the last video called Reduced Efficiency of the Barents Sea Cooling Machine, how basically the, okay, so basically what it's showing, what I was talking about is you've got the, you've got in the Barents Sea here, um, this is Norway, Novaya Zemla, give you your bearings, uh, have a look at the, um, have a look at an Arctic map. So there's Novaya Zemla. This is Norway, so we're talking about the Brent Sea up in this region here, okay, and uh, it's propagating this way, that the Atlantic water, the warm Atlantic water is coming right up and, and taking out the sea ice in these regions, um, and will keep, the, keep them ice-free year-round. So as the warm water continues to go into the, uh, into the Arctic Ocean Basin, it has enough energy down below to remove all the remaining ice four times over. Okay, so that's a key factor to remember. So this was in 1985 to 99, the typical regime. And here we are in 2004 to 2018. And you can see the infiltration of warmer water throughout the, the Barents Sea and going um, basically, um, so the ice, um, this, I believe, is the um, thick gray line show the mean sea ice edge, 15% concentration in March for the respective periods. Okay, so that's these, that's this thick line. So the ice extent was out to here before, and the ice is, look, this line is retreating further and further into the Arctic, okay? Okay, it's retreating, it's coming way out this way and retreating further and further into the Arctic. So as this continues to, so the warm water below, the Atlantic water is keeping the ice from forming in these regions. So this is March at the peak of the um, ice, peak of the ice. And there's less and less ice there because the warm water, Atlantic water is preventing it from, from forming. Okay, but also it pre we don't get these brine pockets forming then that, um, that, that uh, complete the um, thermohaline circulation. Um, okay, they, the water is, the, normally when ice freezes, you get brine pockets rejected. There's a lot of, they're very, very salty, very, very heavy, and they sink down to the bottom, completing the downward branch of the thermohaline circulation. And we're, we're getting less and less of that happening. Okay, so that's a key factor. These are um, temperatures um, from zero to 30 meters and from uh, 100 to 200 meters. Okay, and we're seeing, you know, a huge warming of the surface waters. Okay, um, what we're, here's, here's the temperature over time. Um, so zero to 30 meters is the blue. So definitely heating trends over time. And the red is uh, 100 to 200 meters down. Definitely, you know, heating trends as the Atlantic water comes further and further uh, to closer and closer to the surface. Okay, um, this is showing uh, the heat uh, coming out in the region. Um, I'd have to check. Uh, so, climatological mean heat loss in the Barents Sea is the first one. Okay, in watts per square meter, it shows you where the heat is most greatly lost. 
okay, um, as, as we go into the, the winter. Um, and there's sensible heat flux is B, latent heat flux, okay, so you can see some regions where there's a lot of heat coming out and uh, other regions where there's less so. Okay, surface solar radiation changes is E, not much change, and D, surface thermal, or E is um, surface solar radiation, F white areas indicate the range between minus 5 and plus 5 watts per square meters. Okay, and uh, lots more st statistics and, and data. Okay, but again, the, the key factor is that the Brent Sea is warming and therefore the, you know, it's changing the current patterns, it's changing the ability of, of ice there to form at all, even in the, in the winter, okay? So, you know, we, and when you combine this information with the previous one, which I discussed with uh, this particular paper, you can really see how the role of warm ocean water is, and the, uh, is, is basically greatly aiding the atmospheric heat in eliminating, decimating the Arctic sea ice, even in parts of the Arctic in the winter. Okay, um, the ICESat satellite, ICESat-2 satellite, has, this is a paper on it observing waves in the sea ice. I won't go into the, the details here, just the general summary. But there's wave ice interactions create the marginal ice zone, a region critically important for ecology, transportation, and the polar energy budget. Okay, typically the marginal ice zone is defined using satellite products as these re those regions where sea ice concentration is between 15% and 80%. Okay, but they, so they use the ice sat to look at surface waves in the sea ice. And these waves, you know, from storms far away can propagate under the ice and further fracture and break it up and mix the water as well. They mix the water at the surface with water deeper below and that uh, brings more heat from deeper below. And uh, it shows how they are doing it in winter and also in summer. Okay, so... And there's something called the Synoptic Arctic Survey, which is interesting, you know, a new Arctic emerging. So there was a webinar, which I missed, I forgot about it, but it was a few days ago, maybe it was recorded. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's a group that is really looking at uh, Arctic changes. Um, and there were three talks, for example, Freshwater in the Beaufort Gyre and accumulation of fresh water, release processes and their influence on Arctic circulation and climate, freshening of the Western Arctic and the impacts on how much carbon is being taken in in the water, understand the driving mechanisms and potential fate of increased primary production in the Arctic. So hopefully there's a recording of this, but this is an interesting group, the Synoptic uh, Survey. And uh, so that's it for, for Arctic sea ice. So just as, a, just as a header or a primer, I'm going to film a series of videos on the biblical flood that will drown California and talk all about atmospheric rivers and talk about the risks that we face. And there's something really cool um, called the arc storm scenario, um, uh, which, uh, you know, when you talk about the Central Valley of California, it's 1% of the agricultural area in the U.S., but it's 25% of the uh, crop production in the U.S. And there's many specific crops that are coming, that over 90, 95% of the, of, the, of the supply in the U.S. is from this region of the Central Valley. And the Central Valley was flooded out completely, almost under 15 feet of water in some places, like Sacramento in 18... Uh, 61, 1862. And because of climate change, the frequency of events, of occurrence of these events is expected to become greater and greater. So basically we're overdue. The chances are, the odds are even that we'll have this occur uh, probably sometime in the next uh, 50 years uh, at best. Um, and this will have a devastating impact on economy 
but also on food supply in the United States. So stay tuned um, for these videos. And, and uh, yeah, thank you for listening to this uh, video series. And again, go to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and please consider donating uh, to PayPal. And make sure you follow me on Twitter at Paul, uh, at Paul H. Beckwith and also in Facebook. Um, you know, also find my Facebook page. And uh, when, if you send a friend request, uh, say something about watching my videos and really following my stuff, and I'll add you, because I can't accept all of the requests. There's just far too many. I'm up at the, near the limit of what I can take. But I do have a Facebook page also, which has unlimited, um, unlimited capacity. Okay, well, thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you soon about California atmospheric rivers. Okay, bye for now.